this picture I'm going to show you, you've already seen in the past. Somewhere, probably in your backyard, on a vacation, somewhere you've seen this. Right? It's a low cost, but comfortable, homely, you know, fresco and well, or well ventilated and well lit structure. It's a Baha'i Kubo or cute house that we normally build using local craftsmanship and with our local bamboo. In the province of Bulacan, where I come from, we mass manufacture it like this. And we then transport it to their locations of use. How? Well, traditionally, we do it like this. This is a painting by one of our national artists, Fernando Marsolo. This depicts our shared spirit of cooperation and solidarity that we call Bayan, from the word Bayan, or nation. So, Lifting a whole house may seem like an impossible task, but not for Filipinos, you know. With cooperation and solidarity, we put bamboo poles beneath the house, dock under the pole, and lift a whole house on our shoulders. We then literally transport it foot by foot to the locations, to, to the owner's new site. Wow, right? But uh, today we just use trucks. You know, despite its humble structure, our humble Baha'i Kubo has provided shelter, safety, and security to generations of Filipinos, including my own. So this is me. Uh, I grew up in Bulacan, and as a child, my, when my mother would go, go to work to teach, she would leave me with my grandparents, who farmed a small land. There they had a small Baha'i Kubo, not more than 12 uh, square meters. And it's the first time we've ever encountered the structure. Despite its you know, small space, you have all that we needed to cook, uh, eat, sleep, and storm fountains. And I made a lot of great memories there. But that's enough about my childhood. I'm here to talk about a crisis. It's a crisis that affects millions of Filipinos. It's a crisis of shelter, safety, and security. And you know, currently, the Philippines is short by 5 million houses. It's 5 million houses. This number is projected to grow to 12 million by 2030. What does this mean? This means that starting this year, 2019, we have to build 1 million houses every year. That's a million houses every year. Now, let me go back to uh, the characteristics of our Baha'i Kubo. You know, we mentioned that it's low cost and comfortable, it's made locally from local materials, it's mass manufactured and transportable. If we then add the longevity factor, which means that the house must last a long time, what we're looking at here is actually the characteristics of, a, of prefabricated or modular housing. So my question is, is there a way to use our traditional Baha'i Kubo, which is simple in its nature, to solve a 21st century crisis? And I believe the answer is yes. Otherwise, we would have gotten a different speaker. So this is what prefabricated housing is. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, what prefabricated housing is, it's uh, how the, the, there are houses that are constructed away from the building site, and then transported to the intended site. Does that sound familiar? You know, we've been doing that for centuries, without even knowing it. We've been doing it for centuries, and what's more is that we do it in volume, with local craftsmanship and with local materials. But before I move forward, let me address the elephant in the room. We're talking about bamboo here, and with it comes bamboo. So, uh, who among you, and you can be honest with me, who among you thinks that bamboo is a cheap material that easily deteriorates? You can be honest. Raise your hand. Oh, is this one? So you all think that bamboo is so great and we can use it for longer? All right, perfect. And I'm done here. <laughs> so thank you for that. But uh, raw bamboo, if you don't process it, can only last up to five years. So given the presence of insects, intense heat from our summer sun, and water from our typhoon rains. If we treat it 
we can extend its life to up to around 15 years. But if it move one step further and produce panels, beams, and columns from this heated bamboo, what we get is what we call engineered bamboo. So it can last up to 50 years. That's half a century. And engineered bamboo is as cool as it sounds. So bamboo alone can, has a tensile strength of steel and the compressive st strength of concrete. Now, it, through the lamination process, we can provide it the density, the weight, to resist high winds. Materials engineers from the MIT and the University of Cambridge looked at and studied engineered bamboo, and they found that it compares with conventional timber and lumber, conventional wood. I checked their data and it looks good. So um, what this means is that we can use it as an alternative to conventional wood. So the question is, so this is uh, mahogany. It uh, grows uh, to this height for 25 years. So that's decades of growth. But we can get the same properties of mahogany from a three-year grown bamboo. So what if then we use engineered bamboo to upgrade or improve our biofuel? Yeah. That's exactly what I'm proposing. This is called that is called Google. So what you saw right there for a second, that's Google with a C. So what that is, is a low-cost modular housing made from engineered bamboo. So no visuals here. Okay, good. <laughs> that 12 square meter unit can be constructed for up to seven times cheaper than steel and concrete. So that single unit is functional on its own, but it's not meant to be like that. So much like, very much like bamboo, we Filipinos are our strongest when we work together, by any hand. And that is the same strength of Kubo. I'm supposed to show a very cool animation of Kubo's aggregating the... All right, thank you very much. So as I was saying, this cool picture right here is called Kubo. As a single unit, it's designed to let breeze through the house, to keep it cool, to dissipate heat through the roof, to direct rainwater, and to prevent floodwaters from getting into the house. But its strength, main strength is when it's aggregated to look like this. This is a 24 unit configuration that has a huge kitchen in the middle, a long dining table for our bottle of lights, and there are laundry areas and showers in the back. So to produce this type of structure, we need to harvest a hectare of bamboo. But bamboo grows within three years. So that's a hectare of bamboo that can easily grow back within three years. And since this structure can last up to 50 years, we can harvest the material we use for this for up to 16 times before this first structure is unfit for use as a home. That's sustainability right there. But it's more than just a home. At that state, the potential is endless. Doctors and teachers can gather the children, the community's children, for health consultations and lessons. Mothers and fathers can learn new skills. Children can play together, and of course, who will fight? So we can share food, resources, and facilities in true and you know, common Filipino fashion. The last question is, do we have the manpower? You know, of course. Our bamboo craftsmen have been producing a lot of bamboo products in the past, and we, we are all familiar with them. But, and yet, they still have the same vast amount of potential, of unrealized potential, as the material that they're working with. 
If we equip our bamboo craftsmen with the engine of large-scale manufacturing, if we give them improved bamboo materials, and if we train them with the principle of modular housing, what we'll get is a housing solution that is deeply rooted to our culture, but at the same time fit to answer a 21st century crisis. We've been building bamboo by kubos for centuries. And I believe there's a reason why it still exists in our society today, despite its simple structure. You know, part of it is because uh, of its functionality, despite its simplicity. But I believe there's more. I believe we still see it, and we still build it, because it's waiting for an opportunity to be more than what it is today. And if we Filipinos are the best people to do it. We are a nation of bamboo builders. Our Baha'i Kubo is simple, but it's in multiple ways functional. And um, it's time to use it, and it's time to build it on an industrial scale. Though that structure that you saw is what we call a Habe Bahaya. 48 people, which we may is very common in Philippine culture. And right now, the world is a Kabe Bahaya. And we can deploy our Baha'i Kubo wherever it is needed, even if we have to carry it on our shoulders. Thank you very much.